Reapers. We're coming in hot on the LZ, and we're gonna take objectives until Kylo Ren throws a tantrum and kills all of you, or you win. Whichever comes first. Another victory for the First Order. Here's how not to suck at Battlefront 2's classes. Let's start by getting some housekeeping out of the way. Yes, loot crates are kinda annoying. And yes, crafting parts come in slow. Which is why we're gonna take you through the four classes of Battlefront 2 and show you how they operate and where you should consider investing your valuable time and resources. The Rebel fleet is fueled. Our mission has failed. Battlefront 2 is more of a battlefield game than the last version, which was some kind of Mario Kart coin picking up BS. This time around, you are massively more rewarded for staying with your squad and playing actual objectives. I can do this a lot. For this piece, let's focus on the combined arms mode Galactic Assault. Number one, the officer. You can think of the officer as a frontline problem solver with hard hitting pistols and an arsenal of nifty little tricks. When it comes to blasters, there's no contest. Get you the Blurg 1120 Burst Pistol with Explosive Plasma Mod and Improved Burst Mod to squirt off four explosive rounds with each trigger pull. Dumb name, high rate of murder in close quarters. Next, get rid of that useless blaster turret. It's not very good and usually by the time you set it down, the front line has moved on. Heavy Class is a much better one that we'll get into in a bit. Instead, invest in the Support Trifecta. Craft the diffuser that temporarily disables all incoming grenade spam, the squad shield that can protect objectives while they're being armed, and disruption that overheats all enemy weapons in range. One of the bigger issues in the tight corridors of some maps such as Death Star 2 and Naboo is grenade spam and choke points. So mainly use the officer and these cards to break through with your team by temporarily disabling most of the enemy team's advantages. Bottom line is, if your squad is in front of you, then you're doing it right. Next up is the heavy class. Out of the box, the Heavy is an oddly situational soldier that is extremely powerful with the right ability at the right range. The downside to this class is slow mobility that makes them vulnerable to explosives. Not bright, but brave. When it comes to their heavy repeaters, I hate to say this, but the last one in the roster, the TL-50, is the most versatile, with a high rate of fire and the ability to alt-fire concussion grenades. You can get lucky and find it in a crate or grind out those 500 kills. Since that's a huge investment, maybe go to the DC-15 LE first. It has a similar rate of fire and you can craft reduced recoil and exploding shots for similar effect. The biggest trick to mastering heavy is knowing when to cancel your abilities in order to move away from certain doom. Someone up in your face, pop the combat shield and take them down. Doing this you can even win 1v2 situations. Do not try this beyond medium range. Enemy team far away but in the open, pop sentry and mow them down far away but behind cover, use the explosive sentry star card and kill around corners, or at least temporarily shut down lanes while your team moves forward. Fun note, this also works at extreme range to kill snipers. You can also create more mobile versions of heavy by using the barrage star card in place of sentry and taking the ion turret for backup because it can target both infantry and soldiers. Although if you go that route, you might as well play as assault and we'll get to that next. Next up is Assault. This class is made to maneuver and flank. Hands down, the best gun in this class for the fastest playstyle is the CR2 SMG that can be made even better with reduced recoil mods. It's pretty much the only SMG in the game, although it can be fun to use the EL-16 HFE, which acts like a designated marksman rifle in traditional Battlefield. Fair warning though, this is also the last rifle of the bunch requiring 500 kills to attain. The Assault class is probably the most vanilla of the bunch, and a great place to start if you're not familiar with Battlefront. Their star card selection is more limited, but that's fine because they're very strong as is. They make up the bulk of frontline soldiers, dodging, throwing grenades, and taking down opponents in nimble fashion. Star cards that support their playstyle are the ones that make you tougher to kill, such as Bodyguard, take less explosive and toxic damage, or the ones that give you more damage output, like Improved Thermal Detonator, Acid Launcher, or just Improved Scan Dart. When used in a group, several Assault players can go straight at the enemy team. Any one of them can fire a scan dart to see who and what's in front of them, while another assault player pops Vanguard to get sneaky around the sides. It's usually a suicidal maneuver, but often flips the odds in your squad's favor, allowing them to push through. If anything, the Assault class is great for racking up battle points and grabbing heroes to support the team. They even have a star card to let them get more battle points. Assault is fast, so focus on objectives. 
throwing. Finally, there's a specialist. Even though DICE went through great lengths to say this game is no Battlefield, somehow this class still has the glaring lens flare from Battlefield, and it gives away their position every time they aim down sights. Annoying, but not insurmountable. Noobs play this class as a long-range murder machine. Veterans know how to spot and support their team with thermal binoculars that literally let you see the position of the entire enemy team through walls. With some proper communication, you could be the de facto field commander. The improved thermal binocular star card lets you spot without using your keyboard or using your mouth parts, and I'd highly recommend it. The trick to mastering this class is to use binoculars to spot and aim, only bringing up your rifle for quick kill shots before immediately going back to your binoculars. This ensures you're giving away your position for the smallest period of time. There are a few must-have star cards for this class. Stealth ensures you remain off radar when aiming, Scramble Infiltration ensures you stay off radar when moving, and the Stinger Pistol card is deadly up close where rifles may fail you while also doing bonus damage to heroes. In summary, hang back, you don't spend a lot of time looking through your rifle sights, use abilities to stay off the enemy radar, focus on enemies at objectives, and communicate, communicate, communicate. Alright, that should get you started at the whole not sucking at Battlefront 2 thing. This game has a surprising amount of depth, and star cards let you create some pretty interesting builds. We want to hear about yours. What creative classes have you developed lately? Let's talk tactics in the comments below. And if you have something particularly cool, we may feature it in the next video. Thanks for watching. And the force with you may be it, or however Yoda says it. Damn Muppet.